a man I'm on the go. I'm Sly Brian. <laughs> You're a man on the go. <laughs> well, let's just put it this way. I'm like, uh, I'm glad my girlfriend told me to take my iPad with me because you don't know if you're going to be back at time. And I'm so glad I did. So now it's, uh, I got to create my uh, my Yay. vehicle uh, height thing. So I'm going to go out and get a couple Rubbermaid bins and put it in my center console so I have some height. You, <laughs> you know, that's really cool. And I'm glad your girlfriend is so smart to to keep you on your toes. And, and you know, and, and you know, you could have still did it from your iPhone, but that's not as good as an iPad because yeah. we have better luck on your iPad. That's for sure. But, you know, yeah, so it's it's. uh being prepared at all times and uh, just getting in the habit of like taking your devices with you, whether or not you need them or not. Yeah. And you know, even, um, even Glenn Morshaller talked the one day about the fact that, um, you know, if this guy's like, I want to travel and I want to act and whatever. It's like, yeah. do you have your bags packed? Do you have your bags packed? Cause if you don't have your bags packed, you're not ready for to, to take the jump, to take the right. leap. Right. And then you're going to use excuses and all this other stuff. And I totally relate. I mean, like, I don't know. I guess I just stepped into this other twilight zone for myself because, you know, yesterday was a heck of a day for me. I had to pick up my granddaughter early. I was trying to finish this little project that I was working on. Little, Yeah. 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 I mean, it was just a little project I was working on. And then I was like, well, I guess it won't be till tomorrow. Oh my gosh. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where you realize that we are so full of not shit, but excuses or, <laughs> or cop outs or, or the fact that we're like, oh, we could just say this or we could just say that, you know, and I'm being more refined that, you know, keeping, keeping your word to yourself and to others is really important. Right. But not that it cancels out when someone doesn't keep their word to you, but I realized I fault faltered with my goals, you know, a couple little words I said I would do. And I'm like, you know what? It's 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 not okay, but I'm gonna do better next time. And so, you know, I I just finished something that I've been talking about actually. Right about now or in about 10 more minutes, it'll be three weeks ago I talked about doing this. And it's now in Kindle. What made you choose that photo, by the way? I'm curious. Uh, because the long story short ride, you'll find out why oh, I even okay. used that book. So you wanted to tailor it. It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, right. The long story short ride and why I have my seatbelt on is all part of the story. Okay. The story. So story. The story. It's the part of the story. And um, I could share that with people but I had to kill you. No, <laughs> no. Um, seriously. It's, it's one of those things that uh, it's like an inside joke. It's like, kind of like, it, it'll make sense to people later that they get the book. I, I did have, and I'll put later the, um, the, at a link that I, anybody that already had signed up, I already told them, but I'm going to put the link up later and I'm going to give away about 20 bucks. Wow. of people that sign up and, and yeah i'm gonna do all that shit but anyways you know signature yeah you you're gonna get yours hand delivered in person oh, so, they, wow. so they so there you go i plan to drop off uh quite a few in person so and then you're gonna have your wallet open please deposit your 20 dollars in my wallet <laughs> or or the book is free but if you want it signed it's 20 bucks <laughs> like okay all right uh, way, to, well, way to wave that freaking little carrot over getting no it no no it, getting it signed by the author right but no you know it I, enough of talking about that because the bottom line is to me personally until until my uh cover or my manuscript is is published which they've got 72 hours to let me know wow. um i just heard back i had to trim off the white that i have on the um on the copy for Kindle that looks great on Kindle, but they don't like that. So I had to trim the fat off of that because they want to make sure it looks aligned, you know, which mm -hmm. I, I love that they want the quality there. So I was like, cool. So I sent that back, but I'll talk about this again when it's official to me, when I see it in book form, it's, it's, it, it's ready for Kindle, but book form, it's even a dollar cheaper in book form than it is on Kindle. So just wait. So yeah. And, and I make less on Kindle, even though the price is higher. So 
whatever that is, I don't care, but I'd rather you have the book than the Kindle. So I smushed it up on the Kindle. So yeah, enough of that. So today, uh, the week of risk, yeah. how to get uncomfortable and take more of them. Day four, how does not taking enough risk shape our views of the world and what's yeah. possible? Well, mister, you picked a fine week to talk about these topics, especially mm. when I was struggling. I mean, mm. I'll admit I was struggling writing this book and all that stuff and doing daily chores and doing different things and, and making things happen. But, you know, you do find time for the things that you set out for you to do. And you carve it wherever you can. And, uh, you know, it just, I don't know, you know, now I have... Now I have author next to my name as speaker. So it's like that that doesn't change anything. It just shows that I had a lot of excuses that were not allowed to make this possible. I think I, I think that there's also something in that and there's nothing wrong. I mean, I've got initials behind my name, a lot of them, but I right. never I never choose to use it and I've never had a <laughs> I've never made any more money as a result of it. Maybe that's a bad business model or whatever but I've never did it to make more money. I did it because right. I wanted to, I wanted to be that resource for people that if they're talking to me about a wedding or whatever, I can go to the nth degree. Absolutely. That I didn't settle with my, I didn't settle with my own view of what, you know, a certified professional is or whatever. Right. I actually got tested and quizzed and all of that on, you know, I had to do projects and work with other people. And, you know, my master's took 14 months, you know, that's after I, had to take tests to get into it. Right. So it's none of that, none of that matters, but it, it's, it really gives juice to people and really gives excitement to them when you, when they're like, wow, like if you were to do consulting or teach people how to write a book or whatever, you know, it's like, wow, this person is, you know, they, they don't, they don't flaunt it. Yeah. And you know, you know? that's exactly what I'm saying. It's like, to me, what I wanted to accomplish, I accomplished, and that was to leave memories and tell my daughters things they didn't know by leaving a book. And that's three daughters and six grandchildren, and I'm done. I'm complete. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so, but I'm just saying that I can just sit here, you know, authentically saying that I can understand that why a lot of people don't publish their memoirs or their, or their manuscripts or anything, because it puts you in a place that I can't even explain until you're there. And I know you're there because it is an overwhelming task and things that just could frustrate you in the process. And, and that's all I'm saying is like, it, it really is one of those things that if you just got to push through it, like nobody's business. Well, if and we've been talking about a lot about it's either it's about you and your thoughts or self-limiting beliefs or, or somebody else, the influence in, in voice of another person or several people or a group of people that are getting in the way. And it's like, look at how much of your life, you know, you could potentially be giving up because somebody else doesn't agree with it, but it's your point of view. And right. as I'm realizing that you're never going to get 100% agreement on anything in life. Right. But the one, but the one gift you have is your view on something, yeah. how you learned it, how you use it in life. And if you go looking for agreement before you do anything in life, trust me, you're not going to get it. Yeah. There's going to be more people that are going to say, you can't do that or whatever. Well, just look at the source. Anybody that should be in your life is not going to say that they might wonder, you know, like, well, how is this whatever, but that's okay. <laughs> Cause they're challenging you, but it, <laughs> well, my, just... yeah. it really, yeah. <laughs> my my vocabulary changes by the day How about that, Ray? but based on our topic today is that consider that more risks more risk happens when you're not taking any risks than if you are actually in motion taking risks yeah because those perpetual or those those incremental risks that you take become less and less uh, uh, daunting or fearful right. because your body's in motion. So consider that how does not taking enough risk shake by review? I'd be willing to say it comes from not taking any risk at all, getting right. the ball rolling. That's where the most amount of risk happens because you're in a, 
it's not a habit yet. Right. It's kind of like going for a walk or walking down the street. It's going to be daunting for whoever knows how many days to do it at a certain time every day and get it done. Listen, I, I admire you and you inspire me. And I think going forward, I'm going to do better about the fact that you have a habit of continuously writing and have that passion of writing and documenting. And I could kick myself in the ass. It's just like if we were both starting out young and you decided to save money and I decided not. And mm -hmm. then here you are a millionaire and I'm not because I took my money and did something elsewhere. It's the same comparison with the book. I right. may have done my book and I may have published in three, three uh, weeks to today, but it was difficult on me. I could have alleviated so much agony and so much stuff. If I would have alleviated all that and had written some of these stories as I went along or whatever, I probably could have published this probably in a week and a half because I would have had my stuff. You know, I'm just saying that. So there's a week and a half of my life that I wasted because I didn't apply. Right. Applying and doing granular things, it's just like a hill. If you're walking it slowly, slowly, you'll get up there, as opposed to beating your ass, running up there, being so tired and exhausted, not enjoying it. There's just so many different ways to get somewhere. But that smaller granular plan and taking the risks saying, you know, I'm spending 10 minutes today, but someday when I'm ready, it's gonna be, it's gonna be lightning speed. And, and so the risk, I'm glad because before you said it, I'm all or nothing and it's got to be done and blah, 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 to where you realize and you can appreciate within yourself, Brian, that you have taken those small steps mm -hmm. that you're not just saying, oh, you know, all those ideas, Lynn, I got to sit down and write them. And shit, that could take you another six months for what you already have. So you're six months closer in the process when you get closer to publish. So well, that's just different scenarios of saying that well, a small action is better than none. Well, in having a voice and putting it out there, but not to the degree and, you know, what, whatever parallels you can find, if you're not a book writer, that's okay. Yeah. But I'm sure that there's parallels regardless of your discipline. Writing something on a consistent basis without taking it to the furthest level is almost like not writing at all. Right. Because it's all, it's kind of like a thought. A thought, a thought is only a thought until you actually action is taken and some kind of outcome, you know, comes out of it. Right? right. I've got a thought, but if you don't do anything with that thought, it doesn't exist really. Right. A thought only exists when you actually bring it to fruition. When right. whatever that thought is, you take action on it. And then there's some, there's some kind of uh, transformation in you or in the world or in your life or wherever you apply it so people's voices are you know muted because of whatever yeah. and you know taking a risk it's like you're taking a risk regardless if you think about it or if you even take a step yeah even if you don't even if you don't publish a book you're still right. taking a risk right and and, and, that, and and here's the here's the big problem is that you're going to be where you are if not worse and by the worst is going to be regret, fear, mm -hmm. you know, and I guarantee it's not going to affect just one part of your life. It's going to affect everything universally. Right. You know, because regret and fear, how the world looks, how you're yeah. programmed. Yeah. And it's like there's consistencies across from it, across the board. It's not like it's only I'm fearful here, but everything else in my life, I'm abundant and it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Life doesn't work that way. <laughs> no. When you're out of alignment, you're out of alignment. Correct. And and I guarantee, you know, but but obviously that if you're not willing to look for it, you're not going to be willing to see it and then number one acknowledge it. Right. Because if you don't do any of those, there's nothing you can do about it because you're you're not in you're not in the right frame of mind to see right. a blind spot. You know, or have somebody tell you about it. Yep. You know, I was I was glad to say today, Brian, that I spoke to my daughter for a couple of minutes, you know, where I go to her, her house yeah. and uh, Lisa. And she goes, you know, Mom, I'm so glad you got this book. She goes, because so many times I wondered why, why you stayed and why you put up with this stuff. And I said, I said, I don't have every all of those details that'll come down the pike. But she says, as far as when you grew up, she goes, having the, you know,
to be able to read a book and understand why and how and what you've been through and why, you know, what went on in your life. She goes, I'm going to really appreciate that and feel like I understand you better. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it just, you know, it, it, it's just a freeing thing that it's done. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be gone. I can't wait to take my book and actually. Well, well, and here's the thing when we break it down, you know, and, and like disregard all the criticism and I don't mm -hmm. agree with this. I don't agree that there's nothing that, that somebody should be able to say about somebody's point of view. Right. Right. You know what I mean, like that, mm -hmm. like if you really break it down in a granular sense, it's like, Hey, okay. I don't, you know, I may not like this person, but it's like, wow, their point of view is their own. I think yeah. that there's such a, there, there's power there mm -hmm. and it's not power where you're unleashing it in, in, uh, in an arrogant way. It's that I have a stance on this and here's where I'm putting my stake in the ground. Right. And if you don't like it, that's okay, but it doesn't, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Right. It just might not be right for you. But how many people are willing to do that for the betterment of their customers, the betterment of their industry, the betterment of anybody, you know, anybody that could, that could be impacted by it. You know, it, it blows my doors off by this, <laughs> this arduous task and this huge thing of, of publishing a book, you know, and it's like, wow, what would it take for you to f be fulfilled by writing that? One person, if one person was impacted or changed your life or helped them, whether or not I even knew that they even communicated that with me, if I know one person, would it be worth the effort? Wow. How minimal is that in terms of a reward? Right. And we're not talking monetary. We're talking the difference we can make in Priceless. others is why we are, why we came together. Right. It's not about a, a monetary thing. No, because this is much more important than money. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. And you know what? Your your friendship to me and 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 the love and respect I have for you, that just that means more to me than anything else. Mm -hmm. So. So I just. Uh, hi, Dennis. Dennis so, is here. And oh, and Ray says he loves you. <laughs> thank you Ray. Hey, Dennis, by the way, uh, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> bottle of slap your mama or slap your mama right? yeah um it's I'm not excited. my cup of tea uh i tasted a little bit on my tongue and i nearly had to go get some uh milk um dude but, you uh, should have put it on food not just do that that well, was dairy my, my, my girlfriend did that and she had a smiley face so oh she was happy things. yeah oh wait a so dennis you made his girlfriend happy whoa yeah. and uh Believe it or not, but I actually uh, got it. So thank you for sending it, Dennis. And uh, I brought it out and I shared it with her and her cousin was there. And he goes, oh, yeah, I'm familiar with that stuff. He goes, that stuff's really good. So, <laughs> it, it's good to know that it's like it was something that other people had that they could vouch for. So. <laughs> I know. But anyhow, they would have tried it regardless. And I'm sure they would have loved it because they love hot food. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's funny. But, yeah. you know, it. It really is. It's it's nice to know that we push ourselves out of our comfort zone and we prove something to ourselves and mm. taking that risk. I'm, you know, I'm still in the shit. I can't believe I tormented myself. No, I mean, not tormented myself by saying I'm going to do a book. And you know what? Just for the record, I said I'd be done by June 1st. And I did it in three weeks instead. So, mm -hmm. again, I didn't wait till the 11th hour. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Ray, are you a lawyer? Are you a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So it just, and that, that's about anything in life. Um, there's a lot of things that I didn't think I could do that I was able to do. And, um, you know, and I wasn't supposed to be able to have my three daughters. I, I was putting my life on the line to have my three daughters mm -hmm. and, you know, those are the, those are the prices I was willing to pay mm -hmm. to have them. Um, and so, you know, it's just, I, I just know that if you focus on what your mission and your outcome of anything in life and, and mostly to get out of whatever bad situation you're in, mm -hmm. you know, think, uh, realize you're not a bird in a cage. Your mind is free <laughs> to think of anything you want it to be. And mm -hmm. Michelle is here. There. Uh, hello, hello, she hello, hello, hello. We, uh, we, we, 
we have a tendency to do our show when she's getting beautified. So uh, yesterday was one of those days, apparently, that uh, she oh, was uh, getting her nails done or something, I think. So uh, we're catching her when she's taking a little me time. You know what? I love it. because That's an honor because she could be doing listening to different podcasts or anything. So that's mm -hmm. truly an honor uh, in my book for me. Yep. And so that, you know, again, we really appreciate everybody that's always listening and watching and and dealing with whatever we're doing and we do have a co-host a uh, special guest tomorrow tammy storm's gonna be in the house i'm just gonna mention that right now and she's not here but there she is she says she's a little nervous but uh, she's gonna be there the and i'm and then you're going to, you know, there's going to be a big meetup in the Kansas City area, which she'll be a part of when you're on tour. So. I know. Now it's a book yeah. tour. <laughs> yeah. Well, I won't even say that until I have my book. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it's a book tour, but uh, it's only Amazon. It's only. Uh, right uh, now it's a Kindle. It's, yeah, it's a Kindle, Kindle thing. And don't buy the Kindle one. I don't want well, you to. Pull I up want your you... iPad. I'll sign your iPad. Right. <laughs> I just. It's just that Kindle's faster to process. It'll make it better. Yeah, it just Kindle's faster to process. And to be honest, I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell anybody it's on Kindle because I want them to get the book. And I was like, no, Lynn, but you you got published three weeks later, and that's all that mattered there. But to me, it ain't a book till I actually get to order my book. Well, where's your book? Oh no, it's a Kindle only. <laughs> uh, yeah. But hey. But no, Anyways. it's, it's uh, cool that, that Tammy's going to be with us tomorrow and yes. uh, talking about the week, week of the risk and recapping everything and sending everybody off to a weekend. Yeah, weekend. it it's nice when our guests are always busy doing other things and they have no clue what they walk into. Oh, which, it's freaking great. And, wait, wait. And, and from what I found, though, like with improv and acting training and whatever, that the most that the most nervous people are usually have the most fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell her that later too. I say. It, it's true though. It's like I'm yeah. nervous. Why are you nervous? Because of the unknown, right? But if but if you immerse yourself in it and you have fun with it, you forget that you're, you know, that you're just here in the open, you know, with all of us. You yeah. Know? And I and I loved when I said, I got an emergency, I got an emergency. Can you please? She goes, Okay, I'll do that for you. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> wow, look at Lynn's acting skills. I really do. <laughs> I don't like to be on stage. Well, I like to be behind the scenes. <laughs> she likes to have her headset directing and pointing at people. Yeah. Do that. Do this. Exactly. I, hey, a, yeah. now is your line. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I do. I do have. Um, I do have a film director that wants to write my book or direct my book. So, I, I will be get to be co co producer of that too. So, of a film, you know. <laughs> so. Back to our topic, I mean, is it's um, I'd be willing to put, and I know I might be repeating myself from something I said earlier. So Dennis said the use of a denim esquire. What did he say? Refers to a lawyer or a squire to a knight. Use a girl. <laughs> so Ray, you might be a knight. <laughs> Ray, Ray the knight. Well. Ray's trying to make hashtags, Dennis, and it just sounded good. Yeah, I, uh, Dennis, uh, I know you were on yesterday's show. I think you uh, came in a little bit after, but uh, I repeated myself. I said uh, three hashtag worthy uh, phrases or words. Or, yeah, phrases. It blows uh, my doors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it because otherwise then it'll be there and I'll probably repeat it more times. So I'm not going to You do said that it today. once already today. Did I? Yeah. And I was like... Yeah, oh. <laughs> it did earlier. I'm totally That's okay. Unaware. One thing I did learn that when I even wrote my book, I kept writing so, so, so. And I was like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe how much I used that you know word. Why, you know why that is? Because you're why? trying really hard. Well, I guess that's what it was. But oh my gosh, I was, oh yeah, it was, it was like. You're trying way too hard to sound just like yourself. You know. Well, whatever it was, let me tell you, I very much noticed it and was like, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was like, uh-uh. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like when I have writer's block or whatever, you know, when you're in the zone of you got to get something to done and you have an idea what you want to write, it just kind of flows off you. But right. when you're forcing it, mm -hmm. that's when it gets very robotic and you don't like any of it. Uh, 
I went through that absolutely without a doubt. And that's why I said it was like, and, and I do have to say that I've several times in my life. I mean, when I'd be a store detective and I had to arrest somebody I graduated with, I didn't even know how to write my name because I was so pissed and overwhelmed or, you know, I had to or, write an order, uh, get a order of protection. I was so scared. It took me eight hours to write. And I wrote like if I was in, never even went to kindergarten. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, it really is, you know, really, really hard. It really is. So we got some comments here. My kid uses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get better. And then Mr. Liplock. <laughs> hey, Scott. Oh, man. And then <laughs> Ray of Sunshine. Yes, you are. Ray of Sunshine. So I, I think it's the night of Ray Sunshine, not a, the night of Ray of Sunshine. Anyhow. Yeah, I, I was doing a lot of corrections like that the last couple of days. So, yeah, I hear you. It's just different modes in your mind. And, and it really is getting out of the regular comfort zone of your brain thoughts and continuously fo be focused on something that's greater or possible or that you want to accomplish. It well, really comes down. I also think too, is, is that, okay, you're let, let's just call it off for what it is. It's like, okay, your, your mind is not going to be at rest until you're done with this project. <laughs> the, the clock is ticking. You committed to it. You want it to be great. There's so many stressors <laughs> there. Dude. I was sleeping. I was dreaming about margins for like two freaking days. And then last night, the spine of my book, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to write the, the back end story of writing the back end of this book. Like, it's just, it's just so freaking crazy. It's you're, like, you're, you're, you're trying too hard to, to uh, sound like yourself versus just writing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it, it's all of that other stuff. How's it going to appear? How's it going to look? Yeah. Does it make any sense? But leave that but up take, to the freaking editor to do that or leave well, it up to proofreading it. You know? Yeah. And and I didn't even I didn't even go that way. I went ahead, you know, and 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 took it by the horns and just did it raw and real kind of thing. But yeah, I did have some people proofreading with me and setting me straight and help, that helped me out a lot. You you know, I can't thank them enough. And and you need those kinds of people because you're too much, you know, you're too much in the, the mix. You're too much but in that, your own way. Right. But that just take this, forget about the book part, but just take this as part of any situation you're in, work, situation, relationship. I mean, these are the things that you struggle with all the time that hook you up from the end results, peace and harmony. If you really like or love somebody, you really say, are, do these things matter? No. Mm -hmm. The point is, is you got to let things go in relationships in order to see the big picture of well, happiness. Another thing too that I found just from my writing too is that if I'm trying to force it and it sounds robotic, maybe it's not even needed anyway. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. Because there's a tendency for repeat um, and to just go on in droves versus get to the point and move on. Right, right. And so you want to force something, so you're not you're you want to get it done on paper and it's got to sound great and it's got to add enhancement to the book and purpose. And then you find out it's like, ooh, wow, well, I'm just repeating myself, or it doesn't sound right. You know right. what I mean? Or you know, or that previous chapter has all these elements in it. You're just kind of may, maybe similar, you know what I mean? So a lot, a lot of times that at least I found is that you don't even need it anyway, because you're just repeating what you already wrote. Well, it's just like a relationship. You Here you are practicing. Oh, I'm going to have this conversation with Brian and I'm going to make mm -hmm. this point and I'm going to make that point and I'm blah, 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 blah. Why the hell are you wasting your time with that when you should go with the flow with the person you're talking to with maybe some topics you want to discuss, yeah. but you can't ever pre-prepare for certain things well, until you go and do them. Well, and how many, how many times when you're in a, an environment talking to a, you know, a, a partner, right. Where it's like, okay, you got your little sticky note there and you're like, okay, ready. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work that, that way that. like a checklist like a grocery shopping list. no you shit that. It, that, that's exactly what i'm saying the risk of always taking i've wasted more time preparing to prepare or preparing prepare 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 and it's never going to be like actually getting in trances and doing it it just we got to get well, out of our own heads well, the we got to get the five p's are always going to be Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. Yeah. I think well, there's five or six. Yeah. 
and yeah, but again, it's it's that uh, we but, hold but, ourselves but back. But after after whatever body of work you're doing, whether it be a book or uh, a photo shoot for Michelle or you know something Ray's doing that's important to him, is the the tie you know the the pre work that you did the preamble leading up to whatever it, it was that you were doing right after it's done it's done and will you be thanking yourself or will your heart say hey it's great that you did that because you're not going to get any external thank you for that it's going right. to come from internal that it's like i did it the right way and i didn't rush it absolutely you know, i did the pre-work i you know as one of our mentors says it's not a it's not a presentation it's a performance right you know and it's like it doesn't matter it's a performance your book is a performance. My book is a performance. You know, when we're all talking about it or signing copies or meeting with people, we're performing for them. Mm. Doesn't mean it's fake or inauthentic. We're just performing for them. Yeah. You know, and it's like, what do they what do they perceive of, of this interpretation? Yeah. Well, and, and that was the other thing is, is I was like, wait a second, publish. Oh, shit. Publish. Now people are going to read this. And I was like, and that's the vulnerable part. So like, let it go, let it go. And it's out there. And uh, it's the long story short. I mean, I'll, I'll take somebody with a voice that goes against whatever it is to, to get it out there versus somebody that's got a lot to say, but doesn't do a dang thing. About mm -hmm. it. There's yeah. a lot of that going on in the world. Well, I wouldn't they have thought of jail. Until, they all got an opinion until until it comes to bringing it to fruition on a bigger stage yeah. than yep. their local community or an article they put on their blog or something like that, right? When it goes much bigger than that, that's when it's like, ooh. And and really, the only thing that changes is, is how you perceive it. Yeah. That's it. Hi, Chip. Chip is here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's... It, uh... You know what I mean? Like, isn't it crazy, though? It's like, okay... You know, like I've been writing for a long time and I put it out there without even thinking about it on social, on my blog and, you know, all of that. And it's just like articles you know, sudden, and newspaper. Let's come on. I'm going to oh yeah. I'm going to toot your horn. I mean, you've been published in magazines and things like and mm -hmm. come on. That's a big deal. So don't. Well, yeah. Well, and then to hit and then for me to be like oh, published. Oh. Yeah. I never worried about it when it was all digital and I would post it any which way. Right. I could be. And plus I had, you know, albums on my, on my website and, you know, on my Facebook business page, I right. never worried about it then, but now all of a sudden it's like, Ooh, it's, it's published. So now I'm making it like, like it, I'm, I'm diluting what, what expertise or what point of view is there. And it's like that, the only, the only, nothing is changing about the content. It's just how I'm perceiving. It. Right. It. Like, yeah. It. I mean, you, you've been published in magazines. You're, you, you've been, you're published. I mean, you're published, you know, it's yeah. just, uh, um, are we solving are, the world one at a time, Chip, one at a time. That's right. And we're just talking about how much we get in our heads and, and the risks that we don't take because we, we allow others or ourselves to be yep. and the excuses. And go ahead, Brian. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lynn. I interrupted you. No, I, I, I'm good. I, no. I'm Lynn and I'm done. Okay. Um, <laughs> I love Chip, you. Just in, Chip, just in summary is, is that I, I mentioned a little bit ago is that is that more more of what's shaping you in life is from is from the risks you're not taking versus the ones that you are. Because by not taking any risk, you know, it's, it's inconsistent. You don't know if it works. You don't know how you feel about it. And so it's like being on, uh, um, I don't know, being on training wheels, right. Without, you know, and then occasionally taking them off to, to ride, you know, without any training wheels. Right. Well, the only way you're going to do it is to number one, the consistency of it. And number two, to do it more frequently. And so is that by, most of our lives are being shaped by the risks that we're not taking the the ones that we're thinking about. We don't actually physically do the work, but the ones that, but then once that ball is rolling, we're just in action. We're pursuing what's possible because we keep beating down those walls in front of us that are getting in our way. Right. And oh, sorry. hopefully that helps understand. Ray says, I remember for the first time I, I was published in USA Today 
in his accomplishment, but very humbling to read your own, your own words publicly. Yeah. You know, and I, I think too, is that Ray, you said something that's very powerful to me because humility, right? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I can't tolerate being around people that, that don't have a sense of humility. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't because it's hard for me to relate that way where it's like, you're no better than me. No and, and matter you know, where you grew up, you put your pants on the same way and you tie your shoes or maybe you don't wear shoes at all. Right. Yeah. But I, I don't buy it that something somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody feels that they're more elevated than others. Right. I, I don't, that doesn't work for me. I, I don't surround myself with people like that. Yeah. And, and like I said, it just, you know, you sit there and you go, wow, I can't believe I did that or I went through that or whatever. And you're like, you're, I don't, I don't know why I just, I look at myself and say, I can't believe I accomplished this, this or that, or mm -hmm. got through all these things. But it's just, you know, I just knew that if I didn't do it, how the hell else, else is going to get done for myself right. well, or well, I can I mean, prove I, anything to myself. Well, I, I, I write a lot of stuff about be the standard, you know, do what others are not willing to do. And it's like, Hey, you know, just like, uh, just like at a wedding, when people see, when guests see, or maybe engaged couples at a wedding, see something that was done in a different way, it doesn't mean you're reinventing the wheel. It's that it, they feel, it feels different. It takes them on a new journey. And is the idea totally radical? No, it's just that somebody chose to do it and they did it to fruition. They did it with great results. And then all of a sudden, that's how new things emerge, reinventing right. old things, but having the risk taking and taking full ownership that I'm going to make this work and it's going to be awesome. Right. But you, but you may not know how you're going to pull it off, but that's the challenge. That's the juice that you get from it. Right. And so when I look at that, it's like, no, no wonder why people get, uh, when they go to weddings, you know, back in person, when we're able to do that, depending on where you are in the country or the world is that, when, pe when a wedding shows up in a new way, it's like, oh, I never felt this way before. Or whoever's leading the event has given me a new reason to, to stay. Or there, there's a sense of mystery or this is unique and I really can't put my finger on it, right? When, it, when a wedding is presented that way, it, it, it gives people something to be like, wow, I never knew we could do that before. And that's how it, that's how it spins. That's how it keeps going. Sandy's here. Hi, Sandy. And, um, so that's why if you're a risk taker, you have to be willing to be the standard. You have to be willing to put it on your shoulders without any accolades, uh, validation, none of that. That's not what you're after. So then when it doesn't come, you're, you're not like, oh, you're not looking for anything. No, yeah, exactly. You're just looking to move the needle forward for what something can be, whatever yeah. that is. And that's just conquering. I mean conquering fear conquering you know like you know having a uh, a snake around your neck or whatever you th think you or can't snake do between your legs shut up <laughs> i don't ever want to repeat that again yeah that was a, that was a little lynn, lynn had a very uh, unfortunate experience with a rattlesnake between her legs and she didn't know about it at my feet oh, yeah, at her feet. Yeah. <laughs> i misspoke but that was very scary. Anyway, I said shake because I that that uh, end looked like an H. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're gonna talk about with Cheryl. Hey, that shake between your legs. Uh, you mean oh snake? Oh, yeah. Snake. <laughs> Moving on. I digress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The, at the risk of being embarrassed here, <laughs> we're gonna do it again. <laughs> Next time it'll be a grass snake. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, it's when we look at when we look at our lives and whatnot, I mean, what shapes our view? I mean, it, depending on how you were raised and all your programming and how life sh showed up, you know, over the years of growing up, it's like it might look doom and gloom because of all the conditioning that's been there. Right. Mm -hmm. But that once you grow up and whatnot, you don't no longer have to you survived it. You're on your own. You're doing your thing. You no longer have to live with the constraints of the past. Like for me, you know, I was stuck in, I was stuck and I, I had a big breakthrough several years ago, which led to me get therapy about verbal abuse from my dad. Right. Did it show up that way? No, but there was a correlation between, between 
me growing up, how my dad talked to me. And then all of a sudden, once I deemed somebody like an authoritative figure, I would, I would, um, I would, um, subdue my approach, right? I wouldn't challenge that, right? Now, I didn't realize it until I, I, until I was grappling with a couple other people in my life where it's like, huh, how come I always become subjective? Not, not subjective, but um, I take a, a subdued role um, instead of being myself and standing up for myself. And there was a, there was a definite correlation between the verbal abuse I, I received you know, that I got from my dad Mm -hmm. and then how that carried over once the, once somebody was deemed in my brain that they were an authority or they were somebody I looked up to. Right. Right. And it, it, and the only thing that can explain it is that yes, it it is different people, but a reptilian brain doesn't know the difference. Right. You know? And so what's possible is only, only happens when you break free of things that like, I had a coach tell me and it was done in two minutes. He goes, your, your dad's no longer with us. Right. And this is after I broke up with my, my, uh, the woman I thought I was going to marry. My life was freaking miserable. I moved back to Wisconsin and there was that coaching and training that went on that weekend. And do you want to be in it? And, and of course, every ounce of me is like, hell no, I don't want to be in that. I don't want to go to that. But I knew I knew that phrase and I lived it where what you don't want to do is what you should do. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so on day number three in the morning, I, I correlated all of this when I was doing my assignment at 6 a.m. And I asked the coach, I said, I can't figure this out. And he goes, your dad's no longer with us. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, well, so you can hold on to that. But for all their purposes, you no longer have to live with something that your dad imposed upon you, whether he knew it or not, years ago. Right. And so any other person that's done that to you, you can let that go. You don't have to be on, you don't, you don't have to be, your voice matters. You matter. Right. If somebody is wronging you or if somebody is making you feel like less, you can choose to get rid of that right away. Yeah. And it's funny. And it was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And it was funny because yesterday I had uh, talked to two friends that had said things and I just told them how I felt and they got offended or whatever. And I said, look, I'm just saying, I mean, I realized my words in it. I realized their words in it. And I'm like, and I realized, you know what, Lynn, you got to realize you can't hold other people that don't keep words to themselves. Right. I have to release that. I've got to love them where they're at. And realize that, you know, I see the fault of myself if I don't follow through or whatever. And that's fine. But the point is, is that is not worth losing a friendship right. or not realizing your standards are not everyone else's. Correct. You know, and to impose your your beliefs or your standards on everyone else, they're not the problem. You're the problem because you did you did the work for yourself, but now you know you now you need to know how to live in the world with people who aren't at that level mm-hmm. and still love them where they're at and right. take the risk of saying, are you going to leave them behind? Or are you going to try to explain to them where you're coming from right. and be still the example? You don't get where you're at and you don't get the knowledge you have and feel that everyone else that's not at that level don't mean nothing. We are all taking our siesta, taking our time, some are sp- you know, fast lightning, some are just at whatever level. The point is, is it's evolving yourself at all times and realize that you'll just see things in a different perspective and light, but you have to appreciate where, where you were and where they are. Yeah. You know, and with, let's see here, um, out of those, uh, very transparent. Yeah. I mean, no problem. Right. I mean, you know, th- this feels good to talk about because in the moment it was like, whoa, but mm-hmm. now, but now I got no skeletons in my closet. I mean, we're all a work in progress. Seriously. Absolutely. Us, right? Absolutely. I know that Harvey McKay has talked about that and some other people, you know, that you're always going to be your number one project. Right. Absolutely. And it's healthy. Accountability and boundaries can be difficult. Yeah. I mean, and Chip, the biggest thing in that was, is like, holy crap, like, things that were carried on from my upbringing 
were were unknown to me. Blind spots for heck, that was probably 30, 38 years of my life. But here's the thing. My dad, Sandy said, yes, agreed, Lynn, our self-expectations can't be imposed on others. Yeah. I mean, 38 years of my life or whatever it was, I this went underneath a microscope and I, it, it, I wasn't even present to it. That like my ex-girlfriend, you know, the one I thought I was going to marry, you know, I, it didn't work because I didn't stand up for myself. I wasn't myself. I wanted to conform and not be my right. own person. Right. Well, that parallels with now my dad was not a bad person. He didn't no. know any better because he had absolutely, no other person, right? absolutely. And so that was a huge piece of clarity that would, that only came out of therapy. I've right. been in therapy for almost three years. And as a result, that's how I've been able to see these things. And that's where, you know, um, you know, clinically diagnosed with anxiety and depression, right? All of that came out of having some issues, but then like seeking help and all of a sudden, whoa, you've got yeah. these things going on, right? Yeah. But now I, but now I can be aware of them. Right. And I got to tell you what, my life, I have a lot more ahead of me than the couple of years that it took to identify it and do something about it. Yeah. And I will never be the type of person that doesn't stand up for themselves. And, you know, I'm not going to wrong anybody. But don't bark up a tree. Don't bark yeah. up my tree. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be manipulated or controlled by you and your agenda. Well, and, and the thing is, is once upon a time, I, I take I would take enough bullshit until I've had enough. And then mm -hmm. you'd see me stand up for myself. And yet um, the thing about that was that's just the way I would process or, you know, react. And yet I. I found though now with the skills I have is that mm -hmm. reacting at first from emotions does more harm to you than it does to anybody else because Absolutely. they cannot see that you're coming from a place of discussion, but of anger. Mm -hmm. And then that washes out what you're trying to say. And they just look at you with, well, you've got depression, Brian. So you know, I don't like when people say, oh, but you're depressed. It, you know, I, I like you, Brian, but not your depression. S <laughs> screw that. That's bullshit. So, so you know, they belittle, they could belittle your your viewpoint that, that is valid, you know. And so I find that that's why I, you know, I wouldn't stick up for myself or put it this way. I would not discuss certain things because I didn't want that to be the focus point. That's why mm -hmm. I think... Like, you know, being, being around people that now I can, I was talking this morning and I'm just saying flaw and all this, like <laughs> it's comfortable. I can talk the way I do. And people will make those comments after I say my point, you know, it's like, let's forget about the word flaw. Let's just, I'm trying to tell you a story, you know? So it's been like that all my life, you know, is, is the diversions to what I've been trying to say. And it's just like, ah. You know, that was uh, that was uh, two great Lynn isms right there from Long Island is flaw and story in the same sense. Oh, story. Oh, <laughs> did I say story again like that? Yeah, I said that to somebody else, too, about my story. So, uh, oh, I, the other day I was talking to Tam or Tracy and I said something about, well, that's unimportant. And I was like, <laughs> I go, but listen, I can say important. I can say important because I practice that. But now when I say unimportant. <laughs> Well, and you know that when you stop at, and, and if she's looking at you, you know that by stopping in your facial expression, you know that she's got you. Like, I just was like, oh, shit. So, again, the words I don't say every day, they just come back from Long Island. I mean, like, I was like, you know, but like I said, I had to always feel like, and I think if I hadn't been sexually abused and felt ashamed for a long time and, and feeling because my people in my life were also saying, you know, because you did this, you wanted this and you're in trouble and, and you know, it's your fault. And you, you know, all these things, I just felt like I couldn't talk because people would look at me and, you know, it's just, it's, it's really effed up how that happens, you know? And, uh, <laughs> oh, let's see. Yeah. Nice. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> But, go, you know, all, all I'm saying is that I, I realized that uh, for me, yeah, it sounds cute to everybody, but I just, 
catching attention any different way, you know, always brought back that shame and, and brought the fact that I don't want anybody to know. And, and I'd be among the people that would talk about Joe Schmo because they, somebody did this to them and this, this, and that. And it just, it made me feel better to just be silent on a lot of things because, and then, but then I would speak up for these people and say, you know what, you don't know what happened. And I mean, I was always better about defending and helping other people in bad situations than I was myself because I knew I was weak to defend myself, but I was never weak and I am not weak to defend for somebody else. So it's just, it's, it, you know, process time and therapy does help the way you perceive things. It sure without does. A doubt. Right? You know, the one word, uh, I know it's been a title, you know, for this whole week, a topic, but to be uncomfortable, I mean, that has been my commitment ever since, you know, that's, I can't say, you know, my word of the year is disruption, but I can't say that without uncomfortable. All right. I, to me, they go, they go hand in hand. And I, I have a commitment to always be uncomfortable where I should be, un, where I should be comfortable in the norm. So I'm always uncomfortable, then I don't know the difference. Right. Right. And you either accept me as I am or as I'm not, um, instead of it being like, well, in, 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 I, almost to the point where you don't know when you're being comfortable and when you're not, because you're just, you're just being you. Right. Yeah. And so it feels great because after you do it a couple hundred times, it's, it, it's second nature, just like tying your shoes, but it doesn't start that way. So just to recap, you know, that the uncomfortable it's after you do it, after you do it a while and you do things out of the ordinary and you do them consistently, it's not an issue anymore. You know, like those first 50 days, it was between day 52 and 55 when I started walking every day, two to four miles. Now I'm at day number 465 or something. <laughs> but you're keeping you know, track. <laughs> that's when it, oh yeah, because I, I check in every day with the guy that started it. Nice. And um, he's at day number six, 780 something. So, um, but it took those 52 days, 52 to 54 days where it's like, oh, wow. It wasn't like the world changed, but in my brain, I'm like, oh, this is that thing that they call a habit where yeah. it, it becomes ingrained in here. Yeah. And you just do it. Right. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I miss walking. I mean, just my bad knees. I just can't do it anymore. But I, I loved doing the walking. It just there's so much to that. You got time by yourself. You can do, you know, listen to podcasts. You could just there's just so much you can do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> You're huggable. I'm huggable. I'm, huggable. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give you a big old bear hug when I see you. I can't yeah, wait to well, see you. Wait until you see how tall I am, and you'll be like, "Whoa!" Oh, oh, oh well, I I was married to somebody that was almost six six. So yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so you know, we got a couple minutes left, and then we'll move on to Friday tomorrow with everybody yes. and uh, some improv style fun is. My final thoughts about today's show is, is that, man, I mean, you have to answer to yourself. All of this, regardless of the risks you take, how many, how few, the outcomes you receive, the results you get, no matter what it is, you have to answer to yourself. Are you okay with not fulfilling upon those things that you want to do? I mean, it's an honest question. Like, are you okay with not fulfilling upon that? Because... The only person you're going to have to answer to is you in your life. That's it. You know, and so I know I, know I go deep with a lot of things, but it, it that's what it takes in order to really bring it to the court. You know, risks are something that everybody has a different risk threshold. I get that. But if you're not, when when is your day that you're going to continue to do another risk, another risk, another risk, right? Whatever that is. And obviously this is coming from somebody that, tries to get on stage and be an improv and acting and all that. So that, that might not be your cup of tea. That's okay. But whatever it is, what are you doing to pull? What are you doing to move that forward? That push that needle, right? Cause nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody. And so, yeah. you know, there's been countless examples of people, you know, that have lived in inadequate conditions and their health and, you know, their uh, well being was in jeopardy. But they overcame it and they didn't allow they didn't allow that programming 
and that lifestyle to impact their life. They were taking a stand for something more, not, not reveling in it that this is all life is for me. And so I challenge everybody that's watching this, you know, look in, be honest with yourself and to know that you can do those things that you want, but you have to be willing to give up the view of others in order to do it. Cause the only view that matters when you're doing a marathon or when you're doing walking, the only person, the only person you're having a conversation with is you, unless you're on the phone with somebody else, but you have to get up every day and be you, you know? So being in touch with yourself is essential. What is your, what is your heart saying? What is your gut telling you? Where do you want to be? What lights you up like a Christmas tree that I want to get this done right now? Just some, just some thoughts for everybody uh, for this topic. I couldn't have said any of that any better of how I feel right now, Brian. I'm just uh, just me, just me speaking out loud, you know. Well, you know, and that's that's why I love you because it just you know, you and I don't need words among each, each other. We just we can feel each other and we can just understand. And you're just learning so much about energy and being around people that can lift you up. And I hope well, that that's what I do is give you that energy you need sometimes. Well, and, here, but, and here's the thing: is that like the last two words. I, I know it's in a, it's a part of a question, but what's possible, right? What's possible for you, what you're disrupting in your world, things that you want to achieve, right? That is, I, I, it goes back to one of our mentors. How many people give themselves an allocated time every day to think like we're whatever that time is. Thank you, Ray. Whatever that time is every day, I'm allocating that to think, just like exercise or to do yoga or to meditate, just to think. And whether it's to write it down or just be present to your thoughts or whatever, it's the same thing here. What's possible? How many, how many times do you sit there and, you know, identify what's possible for me? What can I accomplish? What can I do? And just have, just have ongoing conversations with yourself. My only setbacks are me, but truly I, somehow wish to learn to be in five places at once that would be nice yeah that's true i also think too is that depending on what those places are chip is that there's automation tools available now i don't know what those five places are but you know if it's i'm gonna help if it's whatever yeah you know but also though it's like with the power of uh how virtual is now right yeah. i mean when we look at business in the united states i mean heck We've seen the power of video and how good it is in being in multiple places without having to travel there. I'm gonna help them with Streamyard and stuff. So Excellent. yeah, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna help them with we some stuff. We got you, Chip. We got you covered. Yeah, and and I did publish my my book, Chip. So I'll have that time I promised you this coming week to help you. But I mean, here's so. the thing, Chip. Is that like, let's say it's five places you want to be. Well, what about tomorrow? You can do three, and then yeah. four, and then yeah. five. Right? right. Those opportunities. It's like okay. If you have two, which was more than the one, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. there's always going to be more to do and more place to be than what we're able to do now. And but you don't give up and you don't stop. That's the difference. Anything is possible. If yeah. you put the work in, anything is possible. If um, And I think that's why I'm in awe for myself is I still – try to crash every wall, every excuse I've used or my mentality to a, to a higher level of saying, I didn't think I could do this, but I said I was going to do this. And I'm just saying that about anything in life, you know, and it just might not look like, I mean, I've had so many blessings and miracles and just being here in my life. And it's just, mm -hmm. I truly think that when you look at the big picture and you realize that when you're in it, you don't know where it's going, but if you do those little, little things, like for me, a project is like, at first I was like, okay, I was avoiding writing. So I started doing my book cover. You know, I had my book cover, what? Showed it to you in two days. Mm -hmm. But that's what I had to do. I had to like find where I was flowing, where, where I wasn't. And with anything you're trying to achieve, make sure you find a little part of, it's just like building something that you get in a box, right? Mm -hmm. Well, shit. Maybe all you do is put everything in order or you get the one square done. It's, it's 
doing the combination of all the little things that are going to pile up to what your goal is. And it's right. just, you, you well, know, I mean, uh, heck yeah. Uh, oh, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. You know, and here's the thing you touch on something. We got to go here in a minute Yeah, is the only couple things about life that are linear is you're, you, you, you're born and you die. Right. Yeah. Like writing a book. Right. The, when the book comes to fruition, the, the end user, the reader doesn't, doesn't know what part you did first or last. Or right. right. They just see the final product. Exactly. And so life is like that where it's like, it doesn't matter how you do it just as long as it, it's fulfilling and it, and it, it's done to your liking. Right. And I want to say one more, I want to say one more thing about what's possible. If you're up for that challenge or willing to, to ask yourself that question, be aware of the first words out of your mouth after you ask yourself that question. Because what happens is something self, self-deprecating, self right? It, it's, it's something self-defeating where you say, well, I can't do that. Well, wait a minute. You haven't even answered the question yet, right? And you're already making yourself mm-hmm. wrong versus just letting yourself write and suspend any judgments, any barriers, any of that, and just write what's possible. Because by how you... How you answer that, which is really not answering it, you're framing it about what the whole thing is going to look like, and you're probably not going to write anything. Yeah, Instead exactly. Saying, What's possible? Um, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Versus, well, I can't. I can't. What's possible? Nothing's possible. Well, then, what do you think is going to be written? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all the limitations of everything. Right. So, yeah. So just, it, a, just a thought, because like, when I, you know, it's kind of like, what can you do not versus what you can't? Right. It's that same framing where it's like, what can you do right now? Uh, I can put on my shoes. I can go for a walk. I can write an entry in my blog. I can, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you automatically want to go to what I can't do. Right. Right. And I mean, you when you shut off that switch and start looking at the different way, it's amazing how different your life is when you say that's not an excuse. Next. What is possible? So, well, and how many times do we give ourselves the safe haven, just like at an improv class where there's no judgments, there's no assessments? What are we doing to ourselves to give ourselves that safe haven spot, whether it be a notebook or a journal to just write, you right. know, or however we document things that what's important to you? Right. No judgments, no assessments, because I'll tell you what, if you're making judgments and assessments on what's possible for you, Number one, it's never going to come to fruition. Number two, the world is never going to see what your what your genius is. They're never going to see what your what your magic is. Absolutely, we um, definitely yeah. really got to go. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you, everybody. I'm looking forward to having Tammy Storm on Ooh. tomorrow. She is so she's got she's got an accent, girl. I just love her accent. <laughs> you want I get? I guarantee Tammy will fit right in, but but she says that she's nervous. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, look at that, Tammy. Look at Tammy. <laughs> look at her. She's adorable. She is just, she's so much fun. She goes, I'm nervous. And I'm like, too late. Yeah. All right, you guys. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everyone.